Hey, Snackers. Here at DevNet, we know that documentation is super important to developers. Have you ever considered writing your documentation as code? Well, join us for episode 18 of DevNet Snack Minute, where you can learn all the tools on how to do it. Hello, Snackers. This is Karim Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Hey everyone, Matt Napoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 18 of DevNet Snack Minute. If this is your first time joining us, DevNet Snack Minutes is your weekly all things DevNet where we talk about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff that we want you to know. And the cool thing that we're going to talk about today is documentation as code. And we have our guest speaker, Anne. Do you mind introducing yourself? Oh, sure, absolutely. So I'm Ann Gentle, and um, I'm a developer experience manager within DevNet. And um, I love talking about docs as code. Um, and I actually wrote a book a few years back called Docs Like Code. Um, so it's all about how you can use developer techniques for documentation. And it works really well in the world of API documentation, which is, of course, DevNet's bread and butter, um, and what we're trying to you know spread across Cisco. So yeah, coming to DevNet was like the dream job. I had already written a book about the kind of tools we do, so perfect match. So you mentioned uh, collaborating on writing documentation and, and this concept around docs as code. Kareem and I are, are developers, and so we're used to using um, GitHub, and I assume that, that as we're working on docs as code that something like some kind of Git repository is going to be managing um, that content. So how would you uh, tell people who are interested in docs as code, code to become more comfortable with um, with GitHub and getting started with that? Yeah, so actually um, you can, I mean, you can use GitHub, GitLab, whatever for docs as code in a very generic sense, but GitHub Pages is this product that GitHub has that lets you set up a, a website like instantly. So it's just a static web page, but and it's on a GitHub.io um, domain name. But you're basically able to kind of go very step by step on pages.github.com. You have this great, very simple tutorial. And it's just a great way to like get this instant satisfaction. Like I set up a repo, I know what a repository is, I put files in, I made a pull request. When I merge that pull request to a certain branch and all these sort of words start to make sense because things happen, you publish a web page, you make changes to that web page, right? So Git has a lot of weird vocabulary like branch, pull, push, commit, you know, so you kind of, it's even this language to itself. But I, I think that just starting with something that you're familiar with, like everyone kind of knows what a web page is, kind of knows what updating it means, right? And so, and you can, yeah, get started with GitHub pages and, and start to use your sort of known publishing model just to get comfortable with it. It's, it's a great way to get going. And, and I'm assuming that all of the processes and what you just talked about is embedded in publishing our own sites within uh, DevNet. Can you talk a little bit about how we manage the developer.cisco.com site? Yeah, it's it's great. We actually, um, just about two months ago, we had someone come to the DevNet developer support room. Uh, we have a WebEx room just for developer support, right? And they said, could I know how many people work on the DevNet site? And I was like, oh man, I can't wait to answer this. So, you know, I said, we use docs as code and we actually enable over 1,700 people to work on the developer.cisco.com site. So yeah, what we're doing is enabling them. Uh, we have Enterprise GitHub set up as, as our content management system, more or less. Um, it's all developer workflows. And so those workflows build into this continuous integration, continuous development system that the DevNet engineering team made. Um, so it's an internal tool, but it gives us a previewer. It gives us the ability to, you know, basically review each other's stuff. We can review things that the thousand other people are writing, right? And we have this very specialized output, which basically gives us our consistent look and feel on the site and super specialized API documentation, where if you have the infrastructure behind it, you can make the API calls, right? So that's where we're really getting the cool stuff with Docs' code and, and DevNet is like, Okay, we've got these things going. Now let's take it to the next level with interactive, right? Yeah, and that's interesting that you brought that up because Kareem and I in previous episodes of Snack Minute have 
uh, demoed that kind of documentation with the Meraki Dev Center and Cisco DNA Center uh, API docs, and it's awesome. I get so excited about it every time I get excited talking about it. Um, you mentioned uh, using Enterprise GitHub as one of the tools. Are there uh, any other specific tools that you kind of push um, your doc writers towards or anyone else that's going to be managing that content of those 1,700 people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the great thing is we're pretty much like author, authoring agnostic. Like, I don't care if you write it in Notepad++, which is no longer supported, right? Um, I really like VS Code. Um, it has like a markdown editor that actually will show it side by side with an output. Um, and you don't have to get out of your developer tools that you already have. I think that's a really important part of like encouraging the, the subject matter experts to write with you is that don't take them out of the tools that are already in. If they love VI, great, keep writing in that. And especially if you're you know, going to use all your Git commands in the terminal, stay in the terminal. That's the beauty of Docs' code is I'm not like making you do this mental shift into a whole other tool set, right? You should be able to write in the tools you're already in and be able to just like keep that flow going, right? And so, I mean, that's where it gets especially important with developer documentation is just, just keep it going in the same workflow, the same mindset, everybody's on the same page, right? And speaking of uh, developer documentation, and what do you actually need to know in order to work on DevDocs? There's actually a really good course that I actually send people to when they're just getting started, especially with like API documentation. Um, and it's on a site called I'd rather be writing.com. Uh, but he has done a lot of work to help tech writers get into the world of API documentation. So you know, even in like 2009, there just weren't that many REST APIs. Like you could poke around and kind of find them. Twitter API was probably around then, right? But I mean, since then, the explosion of REST APIs especially has just skyrocketed. So they need tech writers to write for these APIs. So the best thing to do is start to understand what is a REST API? Why does it need a specification? And so that's where you start to really get into, well, what is it we're doing when we document an API? And so it, it, it can get technical really quick, but the nice thing about a REST API is that it is just HTTP. There's a fixed set of verbs that you have to memorize. And then there's things like a weather app that you can learn very easily with, with a REST API, right? So like the examples you can learn just and get hands on right away are what I would tell people to do, right? And so the learning curve might look steep, but let me tell you, the jobs are out there. And if you can do API documentation, especially thinking like a developer, working like a developer, working side by side with the developer, I mean, that, that's going to be huge, right? But anyway, the, to get into the REST API specification, it's called um, OpenAPI. And it's basically um, you write either JSON or YAML, um, JavaScript object notation, yet another markup language. Let's see our acronyms, right? Um, <laughs> but those two are interchangeable. So if you like to write in one or the other, you can do that. Um, but it's basically just like describing, okay, what are the verbs I can use? Okay, what are the actual endpoints I can get to? Um, and so it's, it's just this basic set of rules that you're describing your service. And if you start simple, it's, it's easy enough to learn. And then you can add complexity as you have to learn more and more, right? So you mentioned uh, that complexity. I'm assuming that there are tools that are out there that are make that complexity a little bit easier to figure out. So um, for your opinion, what's the most exciting up and coming tool in API documentation that, that you see uh, out there right now? So I actually still love Postman. Um, and so some of the tooling that's 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 coming out around that is really great because it can build your specifications for you. So if you want an open API file, there are tools that are getting to that, right? Um, there's also, I, I can't remember the name of the tool, but it will actually like let you interchange between certain specifications. So there's like a lot of really, because things become more interchangeable when you have a spec, there's a lot of things going on. Now, Postman is interesting because it's honestly getting so, it's so useful, it's almost getting complex. And I tell you, um, every time I open it up, I feel like the interface changed just a little bit, right? 
Um, and but I just found out about a new one last week from one of our engineers. Nilesh told me about this one. It's called hotscotch.io. It's only a web page, but it looks like old school Postman. So you have your little Git field, you have your little request response, you know, you can still kind of do the variables and collections, right? But it's just simple, like dead simple. So that's been my new favorite lately to just, it, you know, and Postman's gorgeous because it has just so much ecosystem around it and you can, you know, you're basically like outputting Python requests library examples or, you know, you're outputting curl, like it can do so much. But then to go back to this like super simple web page was like amazing. I was so impressed. Oh, and then, okay, and then one other I have to talk about. Okay, because um, I was also looking at, okay, curl. Curl's been around forever. And one of the funny trivia things I found out was curl has every letter of the alphabet in parameters, uppercase oh, and lowercase. Oh. So minus A, minus capital A. Like, so oh. many parameters on curl, right? <laughs> and I only yeah. know like four of them. <laughs> so <laughs> and, that's, you that's know, news and, to and me. It might be missing like two capital letters or something. I don't know. But that was amazing. But there's this new one. Well, I don't even know how new it is, but it's called HTTPy. And it's it actually outputs the JSON correctly formatted with color syntax. And I was like, oh. Because I always have to pipe it to Python JSON tool. You know what I mean? So Anyway, one alternative that's simpler than Postman, another alternative that's simpler than Curl. Look them up. I, I was floored. Oh, that's awesome. All right. And before, uh, with all of our guests, we ask one question, and um, that is, uh, what kind of superpower would you have? And, you know, potentially expand on why. Okay, so I, I, I actually watched previous episodes, so I'm prepared. <laughs> Good. Okay. Good. <laughs> so, so my joking one, and and this, I've I've wished for this many a time. I want to be able to walk up to any web page on Earth and edit it. Oh, the end. oh. that's my superpower. It All doesn't right. solve any any pressing world problem, <laughs> but it solves what I want solved. <laughs> well, maybe it maybe it does solve a big problem. That's an awesome superpower, and it fits right in with the theme of today's conversation. So. And thank you so so much for your time, snackers. Uh, thank you for for sticking with us, and hope you hopefully you got as excited about documentation as code as Ann did. I mean, I'm pumped. I'm gonna go write some documentation right now. Uh, catch us next time on DevNet Snack Minutes. Thank you.